My name's Charlie Bristow, and I'm here for Second Swing to do a club fitting and to experience uh, new clubs and uh, kind of experience the fitting process. God, Stripe Show. I gotta stop you for a second, Charlie. <laughs> Look at that total distance number. That's 162 yards with a seven iron. How long have you been playing golf? Since 2009. I just love it because I have fun at it. I just think if anybody wants to play the game of golf, that they should play it and enjoy them for themselves. So. <laughs> wow. Have you ever hit a seven iron that long? I've never hit a seven iron that long. Gosh, <laughs> maybe some, uh, some technology pieces that are helping you there. So here's what I would talk about. I'm currently playing on the irons. I'm playing the King G30s. Just looking forward to get fit for the right clubs, uh, for the right, you know, yardages, for the right specs. You know, it's always important when you get fit that you know <laughs> what your lengths are, loft slides, you know, different things like that. So. My name's Charlie Bristow, and I'm going to get fit like a pro. All righty. So, Charlie, we're, we're yeah. kind of looking at some irons today, right? Yes. Seeing if we could find a little yep. more performance compared yep. to the ones you're currently playing. Yes. Got and it, it sounds like you play a lot of golf, too. Yes. I'm Remind excited. me again, how many rounds is it every year? 95 rounds. 95 yeah. rounds. That's yeah. so much golf. Yeah. I wish I could play that much golf. <laughs> I know. How are, the, how are the current clubs treating you? Do um, you feel like you hit them pretty good? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Are there any, like, maybe Maybe I just need a little bit more distance. Distance would kind of be one goal you'd be looking kind of, at? Kind of the more of the forgiving, getting it up in the air. Absolutely. Just not, a little ease of not use. Nipping it, not nipping it off the side. Definitely. Like Definitely. I, Do you notice any like pump. consistent directional misses when you're playing outside? Do you tend to miss right or left more than the other? It seems like I hit it right, okay. but it, I, I get the feeling about it, but yep. you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, let's do this. I'm just going to get your current seven iron in your hand just so we can kind of start to get some baseline data, okay. see where we're in a good spot and maybe where there's reason okay. for us to kind of find a little more performance in some of these newer models here. So we'll just hit a couple, just swing your swing and we'll kind of just lean on some data pieces here to kind of see where we sit within your current setup. Make sure I grip it right here because yeah. <laughs> that's what Steve Willock has really... Got to get the grip right. Really nice. You like it long and straight. Where did that go? <laughs> that was 144 yards, just a little draw right down the center there. What would you say distance typically looks like with your 7 iron outside? <laughs> what? what? What would you typically hit this one in, in terms of distance About outside? 120, but okay. it could be more. It could be 130. But yeah. In colder weather, it's just different. A little shorter, because, yeah. Because I don't expect to do as well <laughs> whenever it's cold right. and... Definitely. We're used to that in Minnesota for sure. It's hard get to get. It's weather. hard when it's windy. Like yeah. I find that if the wind's blowing in at me, that I got to get more club in my hand. Definitely. <laughs> that go. Oh. Yeah. Really nice. That one's right on your 120 number. How 122 I, total distance there. Why would I miss? Is that typical for a right-hander to make that sudden change that left to right go shape. to the right? Yeah, it, it, it's it's fairly typical. Yep. So is it is it is it is it bad that I'm hitting it right and it should be going straight? Not necessarily a bad thing. No, it's just kind of how you swing the golf club. Okay. Golf's a hard game, right? So there's never uh, anyone who's just going to jump up there and hit everyone perfect. Can you or can you straight. hit a straight ball with an iron? Or? You can hit it fairly straight. Yeah, I, I would say in a lot of cases it's nice to have a little bit of a shape that you're looking at, so you kind of have something that you can play towards a pin right. or different hole locations. Come on. Oh. <laughs> that didn't look. Well, Charlie, way. what would you say the strength of your game is? I would say, I would say putting. Okay. I would say chipping. Yep. You know, trying to chip around the greens. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot better at my bunker play. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. So I, I kind of realized that maybe I just think that getting out of the sand is the most important. Definitely. Yeah. But you just gotta get it out. Just, and you're just good get to go. it on the green. I don't yep. care how close you go. Yep. Um, That's awesome. I would say approach shots. I, yeah. I would say a little bit of that, but cool. <laughs> you know, right? If if it if it's if it's just kind of you, the way the way I describe it is, I gotta practice more. Yeah. I gotta get on the range. I gotta hit a lot of balls. Yeah. <laughs> you know. That's awesome. Just 
More golf is good. Really nice there. Oh, come on. Get it straight up. <laughs> Let's see, like two or three more with your current one. We'll kind of talk through some data, see where we're in a good spot here. Alrighty, Charlie. Let's kind of take a look at some numbers here and kind of see where we're at within your current is that, setup. Is that typical going left like that, or is that a little bit, pretty bad? Like just for reference, that's only like five or six yards left of that target line. So it's still going to hit the green so long as we have that same distance number. And a, and a Tour Pro wouldn't do that. Tour Pro would just go straight at Pretty straight in a lot of cases, yeah. That's why they, they get paid the big dollars to go play every weekend, right? But we're going to see if we can get you a little more performance and see if we can sneak a little closer to where Tour players tend to sit. So I'm just grabbing like the best four out of six shots that we hit there. So we'll kind of talk through a couple pieces here. It's kind of interesting because you alluded to maybe 120 being like our average distance or where you tend to play 700 and outside mm -hmm. in relation to distance. Yeah. And that's like exactly where we've seen this on average today. So very consistent relative to what you'd seen outside. A couple other pieces I'd talk through from a data standpoint. First of all, just your club head speed. So how fast you swing the golf club. Yeah. You're at about 67 miles an hour. So I just kinda... think it's effortless. Yeah. I just think I'm yeah. putting a just lot swing of smooth. Just effort. Yeah. And, and, and what Steve had described to me is you hit it square, and, and Steve Willock had told me, yeah. you know, you just hit it straight, <laughs> dead aim, you know, yeah. you, you come at the, at the ball square. And that's Absolutely. what I've been doing great at. Is. That, that's one of the better things you do. You're very neutral in terms of your delivery. Within one degree as far as club path, face angle is typically very straight to the target. Same thing yeah. there where it's only one degree off. That, that's very, yeah. very small, especially as we're moving at higher speeds here. Yeah. So like one piece I talk about from a shaft perspective, there may be reason to try something just a little different in relation to what you're currently playing. Have you ever played like or, or ever tried like a graphite shaft option? Um, I, I have not. Have not? I've, uh, somebody, somebody told me at Cub whenever I was coming in there, yeah. a Cub employee told me, well, you should try graphite. Yeah. So, and, so and, and, and I don't know whether tour players a lot of times play graphite. Yeah. So not always tour players are going to play within it. Uh, a lot of times like graphite would be a piece that we look at it in order to A, produce a little bit more speed, see if we could swing it a little faster, as well as hopefully just bring ball flight up a little bit. So like okay. those would be two goals or pieces that we could potentially look at yeah. just from a shaft perspective yeah. um, relative to the current one. That said, yeah. like this is something that's familiar to you, something that's probably pretty comfortable. So I wouldn't want to be a case where we go to a graphite option with the goal of seeing improved or well, increased club head speed well, and higher is, ball flight. Well, this is the shaft that Steve had put in. Put in for you. And I assume that it must have been a lighter metal shaft. Yep. And, yep. And, You're right and, on. It's, and it's like back in the 1990s, you wouldn't <laughs> get all these shaft options like, you, like, it, like it is today. You a lot get, of modern technology, you get, right? You get many different shaft options. Definitely, definitely. Oh. So like one other piece I talked through just from a data standpoint, we talked about club head speed a little bit. Ball speed is just like speed of the golf ball off the face. And then one thing we always look at with an iron performance as well too is efficiency. So if you look at this 1.25 number, that's called smash factor. Smash okay. factor essentially is how well we transfer energy from the club to the golf ball. Okay. So your average right here is 1.25. As far as like a golfer, like amateur golfers, you and I, what we look for is just 1.3 or higher. So okay. for you, you're just under that threshold of maybe where we'd like to live in regards to performance overall. Yeah. If you look at your best shot, it was 1.44 in relation to efficiency. So super, super efficient. That's kind of the reason why that one was 144 yards in terms of total distance within the same club head speed. That one's yeah. kind of the one we're trying to replicate. If we could get yeah. that consistency of contact, yeah. that efficient of a strike, we've got a little more distance to take advantage of, which is kind of that yeah. one piece that you had talked about where yeah. we saw a little more distance, it might make yeah. you a little bit better at the game, right? I kind of talked about it a little bit as well too, but your delivery. So very, very neutral from a delivery standpoint. Yeah. Club path, like I alluded to, within one degree, same with face angle. So you swing it and, very much down the target. And, That's the piece you talked about with your instructor yeah. where you're just square. Deliver yeah. the club very square. By the time you get to impact, yeah. you're in the right spot. Yeah. So that's awesome. Really just the, the one piece that I'd look at from a ball flight standpoint is, is I'd like to see a higher ball flight. So landing angle typically would be the reference that I'd use within that. That measures descent angle or angle the ball comes into the ground at. Okay. So your average is like 28 degrees. I would love okay. to see us come up a little closer towards like 45 degrees. 45 we, degrees. Yeah, that way we get you a little yeah. higher ball flight. We've got more carry distance through the air and also a flight that wants to land and stop a little quicker. <laughs> so you don't have to plan on it rolling out 15 or 20 yards. You're just going to have a higher flight yeah. that's going to land and stop yeah. a little quicker. Yeah. 
So like the pieces we'll play around with in that. I talked about shaft option a little bit. We'll probably play with some shaft options, lighter weight steel options, as well as potentially graphite, just to see if there's any value in it for yeah. you. And knowing yeah, that I you're never, I never swing stiff for any reason. Yeah. So yeah. if that, if that's a problem, and I know it's a problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely stay within up. some softer mm -hmm. options. I'm not going to give you anything wildly stiff. And just knowing you're kind of a ping guy, I think within this, an easy place for us to start is probably that G430 head style. Okay. So more forgiving, bigger profile, easy to yeah. launch, and kind of distance oriented as, yeah. as some of our goals are for you. Yeah. So I'm going to build up something within that regard. The only other piece I want to do is just take a couple static measurements. So first of all, do you know how tall you are? Five foot eight. Awesome. Awesome. So five foot eight, and then I'm just going to take one more measurement here. If you just want to put your left arm down to your side, we're just going to grab a quick wrist to floor measurement here. So if you just put your left arm down to your here? side. There. No, that's no problem. If you just have your left arm down to your side, we'll just take a measurement here. So just based on that, longer arms, we're at like 31 and a half or 32 as far as that wrist to floor measurement. Um, so we'll probably start with something that's standard length, just relative to height. But within that, we'll probably transition into something that's just slightly. So you mean if I'm bending down, that's a problem, right? If I have my shoulders down with the with a club, <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, to and, an extent, and I need to yeah. be more upright with it, or kind of. I wouldn't say you have to change your setup a ton. More so, we're just going to kind of cater the the golf club okay. or the setup of the club to what you do as a player. Okay. That way it's it's less work. You don't have to think about, <laughs> yeah. oh, I need to do this okay. with my setup. I need yeah. to stand here. My grip yeah. needs to be here. I just yeah. want to give you a club where you can swing your swing and we get the performance that we're looking for Got as it. well too. To me, that's fitting in a nutshell. But I wouldn't want you to be in a spot where you feel like you have to manipulate things just to get them to work. I want to get you to a spot where I can just give you a club, right. you step up there, swing yeah. it, and know that it's going to go long and straight, right? All right. Yeah, that's so I will important. be right back. I'm just going to go build up a starting point for us within some new models. I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. All righty, Charlie. So I'm going to introduce something a little bit newer here. Like we talked about, we're going to look at that new G430 head style. Should I put this one back? Yeah, I will just trade you here. Give you the new one. Okay. I'm just going to change a tag up here. So what we'll do is we'll start to collect a new average so we can see what performance differences we notice in relation to um, just your current iron versus the new stuff. Uh, like we said, this is kind of new head style. I haven't really changed a ton from a shaft perspective to start, and that's just in the sense that I kind of want to isolate one variable just being that head style. Okay. We can see what performance benefits we get from that newer model head, and then start to introduce or kind of fine tune a little yeah. bit from a shaft now perspective. Something, well. I'm not going to say it's odd, but what yeah. is this weight that's... Uh, so that's just something that they use from the factory. So it allows okay. you to kind of swing weight it properly, okay. just in the sense that everyone has different lengths of irons like we talked about. If it's a longer iron set, they'd put a lighter weight in there so it's not a super heavy head on the end of a super long golf club. Okay, because I don't see it on my older models. Yeah. Is, that, is, yeah. that, is that what's innovative? It's... To an extent, absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and like you alluded to, like Ping, I would even label as like an engineering company first that kind of happens to make golf clubs. They do a lot of innovative things from a fitting standpoint that make my job easier. And golf clubs tend to be things that, I don't know, performance is, is something that follows suit very much within that as well, too. So um, whenever you're ready, we'll just kind of do the same thing. Hit five or six shots with that one. I'll lean on you a little bit just in case there's anything that feels good or feels bad. And we'll kind of just look at okay. data to see what changes we notice as well. All right. Awesome. You're good. Don't worry about it. Let's get two more from you. Better one there. So I would say one thing, this may just be a little too flat from a lie angle standpoint. And I just say that in the sense that impact location is kind of shifting a little bit heel side and noticing a little bit of contact that's just driven by a strike that's slightly toe down. So honestly, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to steal this from me. We're just going to change one thing from a lie angle standpoint here. Just shift into a package that's a little bit more upright and see if we can get away from that kind of inside strike tendency and get us through the turf a little bit more efficiently here. How did the weight feel on those initial swings? Uh, it was all right, okay. I guess. I don't, I don't know if it's feeling funny, but... <laughs> yeah, it's different, right? Yeah. You play a lot of golf, especially with something you've played for a little while. It's going to be a little bit of a transition period here. Thank you. So same setup. The only thing we've done is just made a little bit of an adjustment in terms of lie angle. So I'm just going to collect a new average here again, and we'll kind of see what... And, and the lie angle is very important whenever Absolutely, you get Absolutely, right? Fit. We want to get through that turf square. Mm -hmm. Helps us from a, a consistency of contact so if you, if well you So if, if you have a lie angle that's incorrect, you're not going to hit the turf, or you're just going to stole the ball? Yeah, so you're just going to see inconsistency through the turf. So like that mm -hmm. one was a little too flat. I would say because of that, the toe was almost getting stuck in the ground, leading to like an mm -hmm. open face tendency. If we bring that toe up a little bit now, hopefully it gets us through the turf a little bit more consistently or square. All right. 
Good swing. Much better start line. That a boy. That was better. I look way better. Much better, right? <laughs> so good. Great swing, my man. Love it. Thank you. Go up there. Really good. High efficiency, long distance, kind of matches that 140 yeah. or 140 plus shot, similar to like your best <laughs> one with your current club. I love it. Awesome swing. Really nice. Get down. <laughs> oh. So here's That's where I'm at. Left. I definitely like this a little bit more upright line configuration compared to the first one. Got us through the turf much more efficiently. We look at like the best three out of five we hit with this one and kind of seen a little bit of an uptick in relation to like initial piece we looked at. Um, still a case where maybe we're a little bit uh, shy of like the carry distance average you have with your current iron, just in the sense that ball flight is still a little bit on the lower side of things. That said, benefit for us from a player perspective in regards to total distance is our average here is about 11 yards longer. So still within that, like height would be one goal for us as we look through some different shaft options or even talk about loft of the golf club. That said, yep. to me, line goal configuration here is much more uh, just beneficial for us, higher efficiency through the turf and not necessarily that open face tendency that we saw with the flatter piece. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that same more upright head style, but we're just going to put it on a, a little bit lighter graphite shaft and kind of see how we react to that as well. Because what, what, what's, what's Steve had Yeah, so you have like was, the it was, It's the red, the yes. red one. There. So that was actually what we started with and didn't mm. necessarily, I don't know, get through the turf as great. We could always kind of transition back to that as well too, but for right now, I'm just going to stick with that little bit more upright package. This will be an interesting one too, because weight's going to be quite a bit different here. So we'll <laughs> see how you react to that and see what you think in terms okay. of feel too. All right. So for reference, yours as well as the shaft that I had in there right now are somewhere in that 95 to 100 gram range. This is dropping down quite a bit. It's more closer towards that 70 gram range. So we'll see how that so feels. So it's a lot right. lighter? Or? A lot lighter, yep. So again, like the goals of this are like beneficial pieces potentially. If we could swing it a little quicker, that would be awesome. As well as if it was a piece where it would be a, a beneficial help in, in bringing ball flight up or bringing trajectory up for us. Really nice swing, Charlie. Fastest ball speed, up launches up. Longest carry and longest total of the day. It looked a lot better. We might be onto something here, my friend. See me play at the Masters. Yeah, right. <laughs> or the U.S. Open. I like it. Green jacket. I like. Time. I like. I like that Tommy Fleetwood. Do you? Interesting. Interesting guru. <laughs> God, stripe show. I gotta stop you for a second, Charlie. <laughs> Look at that total distance number. That's 162 yards with the seven iron. Wow. Have you ever hit a seven iron that long? I've never hit a seven iron that long. Gosh, <laughs> maybe some, uh, some technology pieces that are helping you there. So here's what I would talk about. Kind of a, a, just a change within the same head style like we talked about, but just a change from a shaft perspective. Club head speed hasn't really changed a ton where we swung faster based on the lighter weight aspect. Just efficiency has vastly improved. So like we looked at, like that smash factor piece initially, we wanted something 1.3 or higher. Yep. You're exceeding expectations by a mile. You're 1.41, so super, super efficient. It's as good as we could possibly be. Like from a landing angle perspective too, this is kind of a, uh, a beneficial spot as well in the sense that landing angle from 28, which was kind of on the flatter side of things, yeah. we brought it up to like 35. Yeah. So a big a helping lot, hand just from a trajectory standpoint for a you. A lot of times I don't know the information very well, but yeah. at least you're sharing this with me to kind of get a better understanding Absolutely. of well, how I can become a better it's golfer your, and it's, learn. It's your game, right? So we're, we're just seeing things. how we can make you a better golfer. And I think that's the benefit of this process is it works for tour player the same as it works for you and I. I'm not necessarily the best golfer in the world. I don't play for millions of dollars every weekend, but it's always fun to kind of come yeah. in and just make sure yeah. clubs are in a good spot for you. And I never hit that. Yeah. So I never hit that like, before, like we, and it was amazing. Yeah, like, like we said, so like obviously distance was longer on that longest one, over 160 yeah. on total distance. We look at the average, our average carry is 134, and your average total is 153. That's 30 yards longer so, on average compared to the So you to mean one. getting fit for a lighter shaft is better than... I would say for you, fit. as of right now, I love the lighter shaft. And you, and, you, and, you, and, you, and you think graphite would work best? or I would say in this scenario, I'm going to have you hit a couple more and make sure it's something that feels comfortable, but we just hit our best two shots of the day. Okay. So I'd say, I'd say within that, there's probably some value in that. Now, that if I, now, if I suddenly get stronger and I know mm -hmm. 
that maybe I can come back and get metal shafts? Yeah, yeah we could always be, look at something like that. We'll always look yeah. at something like that. So like that. here's the other piece I'd say, this is still like a regular flex category. So like even if we were in a spot where we progressed up to like 75 miles an hour in regards to clubhead speed from the 68 you're at currently, yeah. I'd still say this is probably a pretty darn good fit for you. This is a pretty darn good fit. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see two okay. more with that graphite. And, 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 and most of the PGA Tour players that started on the PGA Tour were yeah. playing graphite shafts? Not necessarily. So a lot of your tour players are still playing steel shafts and irons. Okay. So right. as a reference, their speed is just different. You look at like a PGA Tour player, average seven iron club head speed is about 95 miles an hour. Okay. So that's like, I don't know, 25 okay. or 30 miles an hour faster okay. than you. So it's just okay. a different swing, right? Okay. We're catering towards what you do versus just what, like you said, Tommy Fleetwood or Tiger Woods does or something. Okay. No worries. One more for me, Charlie. This last shot has to go better here. <laughs> You're doing great. Got a boy. Great swing. That looked dark. Okay. Little right, but I love the height. So here's. You're surprised that that went way far to the right. Right. Or? Yeah within it so like the piece that i look at similar to what we've done within other stuff kind of looking at like best three out of three out of five shots so we look at those best three out of five still in a spot where our average total distance is over 150 average carry is at 133 even like one of those misses that we took out really isn't that bad from a performance standpoint it's 122 in terms of total distance which rivals or or kind of matches up with like the average performance of your current club okay. here's the other piece that i'd say that we could potentially benefit from and it's hard just in the sense that i don't have components to test it like I alluded to, like you're very, very efficient. We're over that 1.3 number from an efficiency standpoint. Just the one thing that I'd pick out in, just, uh, in terms of ball flight that I'd still like to see changed a little bit would still just be a little bit higher flight. So we've definitely made an improvement, a progression from a landing angle of 28 up to 36, almost doubled overall peak height from 33 feet to 56 feet. Still, to me, I would like to see that ball flight a little higher. So like my recommendation, I like this graphite shaft for sure. I think it helps it us do. from a, just a consistency of contact standpoint as well as bringing ball flight up. Okay. I also like the idea of what Ping would call retrospect lofts. So okay. retrospect lofts means when we order the golf clubs, they're each going to have at least a degree or degree and a half more loft than each golf club. For you, right. what it means is just higher flight. Okay. Another piece that we kind of look at too is like as we change loft of the golf club, we're also changing bounce or how that sole design sits as well. Okay. If anything, your missed tendency is just slightly heavy where we'll hit a little bit behind it, catch the ground first, and then hit the golf ball. Within that, as we kind of add some loft to the golf club, we're also adding some bounce. So that could give us a little bit of protection from getting okay. stuck in the ground as well too. So to me, that's kind of where I'd live. The one piece I want to look at just as a, a last final tuning piece is I want to try this graphite shaft option with, a, again, a slightly different line angle configuration. The one piece we haven't tried is just a black dot or standard line angle from Ping. We tried something okay. a little flatter. We tried something a little more upright. But I just want to see if there's any reason why we would go with something that's right in the middle of those two. But we're in a great spot here. We've got longer distance. We've got higher ball flight, like you said. Anyone who's playing in the Masters better watch out because yeah. we got a new champ yeah, in, in I got town. It. Charlie, what golf ball do you typically play? Um, the Bridgestone E6, oh, cool. but I could I could play any ball. I okay. just I, yep. Callaway Red, I guess. Yep. And I guess it matters. Golf matters ball matters. For sure, yeah. yeah. I'd say the biggest piece that I'd say to people that come in and get fit is I just tell you to play the same golf ball every time. Because yeah. if you play the same golf ball every time, especially in the sense that you play all yeah. kinds of different golf courses, yeah. you don't have to react to a different golf course as well as a different golf ball. It's just different course conditions, and you've got the same golf ball every yeah. time. Seems like I gotta. Seems like I gotta follow that rule. Yep. You know, play the same one. Play the same but one. But I, but I find, I find, I find balls in the woods, <laughs> yeah. and it's hard for me to just kind of switch to a different brand. Definitely. You know? Definitely. I know Titleist is a great <laughs> golf ball company. Titleist balls are good too. Yeah, I was just gonna bring that up. It just in the the sense that again, that would be another piece where we could potentially lean on golf ball as a helping hand to get ball flight yeah. up a little bit. So yeah. like for testing sake, this is a Pro V1. If we looked at like Pro V1X, that could be something that helps us bring yeah. ball flight up or bring yeah. spin rate up as or, well too or, for us. Or tailor made or five yeah. layer ball. Yeah. That's really, you, you could kind of take your pick of any manufacturer and kind of say, hey, they probably have a golf ball that kind of caters towards what we're looking for from a ball flight standpoint. Yeah. Ping should make a golf ball. It should, right? <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't, but. <laughs> well, let's do this. Let's no, hit a couple no, with that and kind of see where we're at within that just standard line angle configuration. I definitely like the graphite shaft. I think that G430 head style is awesome. Okay. Like we alluded to, I like the idea of retrospect lofts as well too. We just want to make sure line goes perfect for you. 
Great swing, Charlie. I love Fred Couples, by the way. Yeah. He's just, he's you and just, him have similar just, tempo, nice just, and smooth. Just like he has a he has a great way of playing golf. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Almost a hundred on the ball speed. Another one at 160, Charlie. Wow. That's 141 carry too, so that's our longest carry distance of the day. We'll take a hundred of those to go. <laughs> And look to. Ugh. Such a good swing, Charlie. I can just hammer that golf ball. <laughs> just pound it, right? Pound it. So here's where we're at with this one. Like again, a lot of similarities in relation to like our test, just with the slightly more upright package. I would say this, like to me, this is as good as we've gotten with anything. Fastest club head speed in combination with uh, most we've seen from a ball speed standpoint. In regards to efficiency, 1.42 is kind of where we're living on average now from like a 1.25 starting point. <laughs> Distance wise, again, like we are flying this golf on average almost 20 yards past where your current one was rolling out to. Yeah. Average total distance is 35 yards longer. Okay. And again, in relation to trajectory, this is the highest light we've seen so far. So here's my piece. I, I think that's the fitting. I like that 430 head style. I, I like, like that it. graphite shaft option, the Alta CB in a regular. Okay. Like we talked about, it's a great fit now, but even if you progress a little bit in terms of speed, it's still yeah. a really darn good yeah. fit for you. Line angle wise, we kind of tried something that was a little flatter, similar to like your current setup from a line angle perspective in that red dot configuration. Maybe just a little stuck through the turf. Also yeah. tried something a little more upright and like that in relation to just the flat package. That said, to me, this is the answer. We look yeah. at something that's just standard from line angle perspective and yeah. we just saw great consistency of contact, consistent direction, and again, highest ball flight we've seen as well too. So the only okay. thing I'd change from that, like I said, just in the sense that we're going to be ordering these from Ping directly, I okay. would say let's order them with retrospect loss just so we have even more loft and we could take advantage of that higher ball flight Thank piece you. as well. Thank you just more much. stopping power, again, like we said, just gives you less guesswork. You know if you've got high ball flight, something's going to land and stop versus a low flight where we've got a little bit more rollout distance. Yeah, appreciate so it. So to me, that's where I'd live for you. And again, goals for you, you wanted to see a little more distance. I, I don't know, we didn't get a little bit, we got a lot. So yeah, I, I think we'll have to settle, settle for that right now. Feels yeah. good to you though? Yeah, it does feel good. I love you know, it. I, I love know it. the light metal shaft may not work as well, maybe. Yeah. Or I think maybe just, I again, stronger. just kind of changing it up a little bit. I think the, the metal or the, the steel shaft worked for a long time, but yeah. I think this is just a case where we just saw more performance within this one. Yeah. And I think it's a cool thing too, because like even within two different line configurations, our best option is that 430 head style on that graphite shaft. So like yeah. even if we have the wrong line, line yeah. we're still getting more performance. So out you of that mean, so you yours. mean, you mean as as the shaft gets lighter, that I, that I can, you know, swing it faster. Swing it yeah. faster, get higher ball flight. Yeah. Yeah, especially much more torque too, or much uh, more just not necessarily like like it, it's it's lighter weight, so it's going to be less work from a player standpoint. Okay. You're not going to have right. to work as hard. And not, not necessarily that you're not going to have to work, work really as hard, hard to hit yeah. the ball. <laughs> and especially, too, like you talked about initially, you don't necessarily love long irons. Like some yeah. of that is like a, a takeaway from like hybrids or higher lofted fairy yeah. woods you have in this yeah. stuff, too. If we have a shaft option that's consistent, it's not a different swing with irons as it is with hybrids or fairy woods. It's just a consistent feel and a consistent yeah. swing across the bag for you. And you mean it, like, like what I'm going to say is that, you know, players that are not playing on the PGA Tour mm -hmm. get rid of the long irons. Long just get, just get rid of it. Hybrids are your friend. Higher loft and fairy woods yeah. are your friend for hybrids sure. Hybrids are just much more better. Absolutely. It's know. easier to launch. They're more forgiving. If hybrids weren't innovative, it wouldn't be as fun. Right, you exactly. Know. Exactly. Three iron is hard to hit for everyone. Tour yeah. players, you and I, that's why a lot of players, even tour guys are going to hybrids or, or seven woods, five yeah. woods as that, that kind yeah. of long iron replacement. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's kind of where I would lean. The only other question I'd have is kind of off of that, like what would you want the longest iron to be within the set? Uh, probably a, uh, like a six iron, right? Six iron or seven iron. What, what, what would you say, Bill? Seven, seven probably. Seven iron. What, what's the first hybrid you carry? Do you have a six? Like hybrid a six right? hybd. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do that. We'll, we'll do seven iron as the longest club. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about some wedge lofts as well too. Cause like these loft structures on these G430 irons are a little different compared to the yeah. G30s that you currently play. They're a little bit stronger. So within that, there's kind of a need for an additional wedge within the set. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what do you have for like just wedges currently? I have a uh, uh, pitching wedge, yeah. utility, sand wedge, lob wedge. Okay. 
and, and are they're those within your G30 set as well, too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're within that. Yeah. Okay. So, like, my recommendation, I, I would kind of keep all and, those pieces the same. And a utility is a gap wedge. Exactly, yep. Yeah. So, the, the only difference is, like, you look at pitching wedge loft on your set, which is around 45 degrees. The new set, the 430s, is, like, 41 degrees. So, it's quite a bit stronger. So, within that, we'll still have your utility wedge that's 50 degrees. We'll still have a sand wedge that's 54, a lob wedge that's at 58. It's just the addition of a 45-degree club that bridges the gap between the pitching wedge and the, the utility wedge, which is at 50 degrees as well. So, so, you, mean, so you, mean a, you mean a lob wedge is going to be 58 yes. rather than 60? Yes. Okay. Yep. So like, I, I would kind of lean on player preference within that as well too. So like just within the set specifically, like their lob wedge is, is offered at 58. It's always a piece where we can manipulate that too if we want it to sit at 60 degrees. But otherwise, if we lean on that 58 degree wedge, we have consistent gapping across those wedges where it's four or five degrees across each, set, uh, across each club. Yep. So to me, that would, that would be my recommendation. We add another wedge for you. That way we just have consistent gapping across the set. So now that you got the new stuff in the bag, <laughs> how excited are you to get out there? I'm very excited. I'm very excited about paying. I'm very excited about getting out on the golf course to learn the golf game that needs to be played. And I thought that I was very, very successful in the graphite shaft because I got a lot longer and I feel very blessed to have a golf club that I can hit into the turf and, and, and be successful and not have any flub shots. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a great thing.